everybody. I hope you're doing marvellously well. Now, if you've followed this channel and pretty much every other channel, you'll notice a lot of people are talking about room emulations with headphones. That means using your headphones, but putting yourself into different rooms. And for many people who have come up working in rooms with speakers, they find headphones fatiguing, to be quite honest. They're not used to it because the sound is direct. It, hits, it goes straight into the pinnae of the ear and it doesn't give you that experience of having some ambience. Now, lots of people have brought out tools for it. I think one of the first was, of course, Waves and they went to Abbey Road and they emulated the room. And I actually flew out there and heard it in the room. I put on the headphones I listened, I took the headphones on, I pressed play, and they did a remarkable job. It sounded just like being in the room. And they had the head tracking and all of that stuff. Then, of course, there was a company called Embody, who we've done some work with, who also did a very similar thing. But this time they did the panay of the ear, so they would measure it so every individual person could hear the way they hear. Then there's, of course, there's software like Sonoworks. So Sonoworks do you know, emulations where you can basically take your headphones and model the experience based on the frequency response of your headphones. The new one here that we're going to review is by, it's a partnership between a company called Deer VR and Sennheiser. So Sennheiser have sent us a pair of HD 280 Pros, which I believe are sort of affordable headphones that a lot of people use. So it's a nice kind of way of working. What they're doing, this company, is they are getting away from this idea of you mixing in rooms that you don't know. What they've done here is they're making a, I wouldn't say a perfect room, but they're making a very balanced room, one that's really well treated, that's more, dare I say, neutral. Well, we're going to find out if that's true. And I like that idea because yes, you can use these other emulations and you can go through 10 or 15 or 20 different rooms, which I think is remarkable and fantastic. But sometimes, as many people have pointed out when I've demoed them, they're like, yeah, but that room sounds so basic. I wouldn't know how to mix in there. Can't we have a room that has ambience, but also is flatter and more accurate? Well, that's what I believe this company well, that's what they're saying they're going to do. So before we get started, here's something really important I want to talk about. Everybody is mixing on headphones now. I don't mean all the time, but even guys I know that drive to studios every day or have studios in their houses or in their back garden or whatever it is, are doing a lot of work on headphones. It has changed dramatically. It used to be you'd put on a pair of headphones to just isolate and check out some stuff. But the reality is now is everybody's getting set, oh, can you recall this mix? And if you've got the stems, for instance, or the, re or, or the session on a hard drive and you've got your laptop, you can open it up and do a couple of tweaks and send it back. You could be doing that in your garden. You could be doing that sitting on your couch. So for, for professionals, many of us are using headphones every single day in one way, shape, or form, even though we might prefer to work in a room. So what they are doing here is they are thinking specifically about, well, how can we bring in the room ambience, bring in the experience of being in a room without it being so colored that you have to relearn it? And that's an interesting perspective. So let's get in there and see if it works and how it works. I'm going to find a song and we are going to listen to what it does. Okay. Here is in Bypass. Take it a bypass. Here's the ambience control here. Neutral. Even when I'm cold and gray. It was interesting when it stops, you hear just that little bit of room. <laughs> it's interesting on this first mix room A, it's definitely not got a lot of ambience on it. Even when I crank it for the full experience, it says amount of reflections of decay that are being mixed into your overall virtual sound experience. I crank it. It's not huge. Now here, just to quickly 
show you the headphone compensation here. I can do some high pass and some low passing. I can also select lots of different headphones. So they've obviously gone and modeled a whole bunch of headphones frequency responses, which is smart. So the focus control, let's have a look at the focus control. With focus, you select the right balance between overall colorization and localization based on a patented clarity algorithm by Sennheiser Ambio. Let's try it. Let's do something. Let's go to a, a different room. Here's B. I'm assuming B is going to be bigger, since the first one's quite neutral. Oh, quite a lot different. Oh, interesting. Okay. Take the focus. Quite subtle, but it's it's definitely exaggerating probably the frequency inherent in the room. So it looks like the focus control is built for the binaural experience, which we're not doing at the moment. But what does that mean? Why could that be interesting for you? Well, we've been talking a lot about spatial audio, about immersive sound and all of the other fun things. And one of the things that keeps coming up in conversation is this idea that because mixers are building Atmos rooms and they're building them thick and fast, the reason why they're building them is because Atmos is a format that can be used to create deliverables, meaning mixes, in all of the different formats. It can be for spatial audio, full-blown Atmos, you know, in Tidal, but spatial in Apple. It can be, I can't remember what Amazon's um, particular algorithm is, but the one for Amazon and all of the above, for Netflix, for surround systems, for movies, for Atmos, obviously movies. The point is, it's like, the reason why people are building these systems is they're building them so they can mix for all different formats. Atmos, for instance, is not about, you know, trying to sell expensive Atmos systems to people. I'm sure there will be people that will buy them in their home setups. It's going to be expensive, but it's not about that. It's about all of the other ways you can experience immersive audio. So it seems that this control here, the focus clarity to localization, is all about the binaural experience, which we're not doing at the moment here. Let's go and try out some different rooms. But it's interesting where it's dry, even though I'm not listening in binaural, if I go to the localized, there's a real kind of high mid boost. Gets a little scoopy sounding here. And then there's this sort of mid range coming in. So even without it being in binaural, it's having an effect. So I'm going to go on to club here. Let's have a listen to the club setting. Home theater. Bypass. I know what this is going to be good for. Like, simply, I, they're, they're doing lots of clever things here, which is fantastic. And I love the fact that they're going towards binaural, which is really, really good. This is the default setting mix room A. And I want you to listen to this, so with and without it. Bypass. Take some of that focus down, move it towards the clarity a little bit. Even when I'm holding 
bypass it. So do you hear what I'm hearing? I'm hearing it just sound like I'm sitting in a room. Because they've designed something quite neutral and I've just left the ambience at halfway, I've taken the focus down a little bit. It's like it's gone from being listening with headphones to listening in a decent, good sounding room that isn't too boomy, isn't too this, isn't too that. I felt like it was on this song in particular, it was a little bit kind of shriller in the high mids. So I just ducked a little bit, scooped it out a little bit. And now I feel like I'm sitting in a good sounding room. So for people that want to be in an environment that is not headphones, just blasting to the side of their skull, this makes some sense. Bypass. I'm going to keep the same focus and ambience and move to mix room B. Take the neutral, take it down towards more neutral. It's interesting. It's about creating and tailoring a room that sounds like a good room to you. I mean, that's what they're saying. They're designing. I think that's what they're giving you. Kitchen's funny. <laughs> it's great. Stadium, baby. This is going to be an interesting tool. I think for somebody that's maybe up and coming in mixing, probably going to blow your mind because you're probably going to think, why do I need this? And you might be right. When you're coming up and you're still learning how to mix and hear things, I don't think this is a tool. And I think there's going to be a lot of people commenting like that. However, if you've been mixing a while, if you understand and have experienced the difference between working on mixes and working in rooms, you're probably find a setting on this that makes some sense to you. I don't know. I think it's, it's fun to go to the kitchen and the living room and stuff like that. And you could, you could check it so that you, you have settings that you can check in different rooms. What I do like about it is there was one with the stadium when I cranked it and the low end exploded and got absolutely nuts. But really when I moved, you know, backwards and forwards in different settings, it wasn't, it didn't get terrible and unusable. Some of the plugins that I've tried, um, some of the rooms are so boomy, um, it just doesn't really tell you anything. It's like I couldn't mix in a room that's like, you know, and got tons of sub on it. And, um, and I think a lot of the ones that I've tried that I haven't actually demoed here live, but I've tried, 
um, tend to be sort of smiley faced and pretty and almost make it feel like you're listening to Beats headphones on everything. You know, no disrespect to Beats headphones. I'm going to be interested to see how people react because the reality is it's a tool that you should use subtly and you should find something that makes some sense. And to be honest, it will probably give you some relief from mis mixing on headphones all the time. This is definitely for somebody that has been mixing a while and knows what they're hearing, understands the benefits and the shortcomings of rooms, and wants a good sounding room that they can work in. And you tailor it. Now, it's not going to be, a, it's not a fix all magic plugin that you're going to download and suddenly the world's greatest mixer. You do need ha to know how to mix and how to hear. But once you've, once you've got a certain level of skill set, this is something that could be quite beneficial to you because you can bring in a little, you know, I've reduced the ambience on mix room. A, I brought the focus down on this song because it felt like it was just a little bit too brash. You know, I didn't go anywhere near this head rotation. I did bring up the master gain earlier. And now what I've got is a room tone that isn't massive, that's a little bit more gentle on my ears, actually makes it a little bit more exciting and interesting to listen to rather than just flat and dead. I mean, the reality is for me, that might be a set it and forget. Just being honest, it might be a set it and forget. I put it on my master bus. I'm using it all the time. Maybe when I go away, it's a reality. It could be a set it and forget. I think for people that are going to be mixing in immersive and Dolby Atmos and all of, you know, and then eventually coming down to binaural, this is going to be something that's interesting for them because they're going to better emulate sitting in their studio. But it is a very specific tool. It's a very specific tool for at the minimum, you know, relatively accomplished mixers. People that have been mixing long enough to hear the subtleties and the benefits of being in a room as opposed to headphones and vice versa. Let's be honest, everybody's mixing on headphones now. They just are. It's just a reality. Most of us are forced into that situation. So that's why there's so much emphasis on this. How can we improve the headphone experience? I've already had, had that at the front as well by the time I said this, but it's something that's very important to note. Anyway, the great thing is, is they've given us the plugin and the headphones to give away. So you can enter to win down below. What have been your experiences of using these kinds of plugins? I mean, obviously this one is to create neutrality and create something that's like a listening experience in your own custom room, but there are plenty of other ones out there. There's the Waves one out there. There's an Embody, of course. There's Slate. And there's all of these different ones and they're, they're popping up all over the place and they're all emulations of rooms. Heck, I have one, my own room emulated with Embody. You can go and listen in this room. And when you go over to the 1032s and, and, the, and the Focals, which are currently not down, it sounds just like the room. It's done a great job. It's really good for me. But it's a room, my room, and the way my room sounds. I got used to it and learned in it. What they're aiming for here is they're giving you a neutral sounding balanced room that brings in ambience, but doesn't have any excessive frequencies. It got a little brighter for me, but I compensated for it. It got maybe a little bit more ambient than I want to hear, but I compensated for it. And that is what this is all about. Anyway, tell us what you think. Don't forget to enter to win. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing, and we'll see you all again very soon.